Hi guys, Patty from Patty's Crafty Spot, and I'm here to share with you part three of three of our It's All About the Pockets mini album, and I absolutely love how this turned out. So as the title says, imagine, I could not have imagined how cute this would have come out. So you know we all love pockets, so when I went ahead and created this, I created it to kind of be a catalog of different pocket ideas that you could do, or you could use it just as a mini album, and I love it as a mini album. So let me just show you the front, and the side, and then the back, and here is the top view. So let me go ahead and walk you through. So in this video, we're going to go ahead, create the cover, the binding system, and we're also going to go ahead and do some stacked pockets on the front and the inside back cover. So that's what we're going to go ahead and create in this video as a new element in here. So I'll show you how to do the stacked pockets. Really cute. And this is what it looks like all together. So right here, this is the first page design that we did in the first video. And we have a wrap around pocket that wraps around. Let me see if I can extend out. Okay, maybe that will help a little bit more so you can see it better. So I don't have to keep sliding it. Anyway, so then, like I said, this is a wrap around pocket that we created in the first video which kind of adds a fun little element of how the pocket sticks out. And then we created these two pockets right here for side pockets. I'm just taking the tags out because I didn't make tags for everything. So I just want to show you as we go along. And then right here, this opens up with our pockets. And then we go like this. Whoops. too far. And then we went ahead and created a little larger pocket for the side. And I just created a simple little photo mat thing here just to go ahead and stick in. We don't have a whole lot of room with this pocket because of how we attached it. So we don't want to chunk up anything too big with embellishments or layers of cardstock. We want to keep it fairly simple. So I just did enough to give you a nice visual right here. We left this page alone because of all the pockets and stuff. We were getting really thick. And this I was going to decide at the end what I was going to do with it. But considering where I am at, I decided to go ahead and leave it alone for space to go ahead and put photos. This So this part here, now it was all in part two. We created this fun little page. And we have the dies that we used. Opens up up here. This little flap keeps everything enclosed inside this pocket so when you go ahead and close it down nothing will fall out and then we have these fun little pockets right here whoops and again just like that and we created this cute little arrangement of some not stacked pockets but they're kind of layered up there or like a collage of pockets i guess you could say and we did those and then we just repeat ourselves whoops so then we go back over here again to this page where we have our wraparound pocket. Oops. You can go ahead and create just like that. Again, this was using dies. So over on this one here, we left them straight. And then I showed you when you go ahead and add the on the edge dies, a different look that you can get by using those. So it gives it a different look throughout the book. So you have that right there. And then we did the same thing if you flip it open. Again, adding a fun little element right here where you have your two corner pockets to hold your stuff in, but you're using the on the edge dies where it gives you kind of that fun little look to it. This reminds me of bat wings, like all I can think about is Halloween. And then over here is a fancy little pocket just like that and then we open up again room for photos little photo map right there over here again using the flip pockets now again we use the on the edge dies to kind of give it a unique look and everything just like that 
So just showing you what a difference the fun little uh, on the edge dies do just to create a different effect. So we have these and it looks really cute on the little collage of pockets and then up here. And these ones here too, these ones you can do either direction. So you could go like that, depending on what you do with your pattern paper, the look that you're going for. This one, I like the balloons on the top, but I think, where is it? Maybe it's this one. Yeah, this one here, I like it this way, so this one's on the top. So you, you have the option depending on which direction you would like all those to go in. And then again, going back to the third page, keeping repeating everything. And then that one, whoops. And then we finish up here with the last page. So you can see how much fun these pockets are. And then we finish up with our stacked pockets on the back page. Alrighty. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial or will enjoy this tutorial. I really loved creating this book. It's a really fun one and it's definitely going to go in one of my tops of that I've created that I really like. So anyway, um, go ahead and enjoy the tutorial. If you have any questions, just let me know. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and get started on making the album cover, which is the exciting part because now we get to bring the whole thing together, which I can't, will not wait to see what this one's going to look like. So to make the cover, you're going to need two pieces, nine by nine of chipboard and one piece nine by three. That will be our spine. And I already went ahead and covered this one here in cardstock. So we're going to go ahead and do these ones together. If you've seen my other videos, you already know how we do this. So I have these little spacers that I'm going to use. And you start off with a piece of cardstock. I want to make sure if you don't have the spacers, just go ahead and measure out a one inch border around your paper. So if you have this one that's nine by nine, you're going to be making it 10 by 10 and then put this in the middle. I've already added my score tape to the entire back. And I'm doing that because I don't want any lifting of my card stock on my cover. Depending on what you do to the cover, if you're adding embellishments and things like that, sometimes the if you only put tape around the border, you'll have the inside lifting, which could also lead to tearing at times because there's nothing holding that on. So we have that. And I'm gonna make sure we're stuck down. And if you're not already familiar, this is a way of creating the cover that Tamara from Country Craft Creations had created. And it is my new favorite. And now we're going to cut off one inch around. And this will give you a nice clean look to your covers. And from here now, I'm going to go ahead and border around with some score tape. And then I don't have the, any wide stuff left, so I'm using my three eighths all the way around. And then we're going to trim off our corners after. Uh, 
now I'm just going to trim off my corner. So I'm using a tool to trim my corners. However, if you don't have one, you can go ahead and cut across. But you want to leave probably about a sixteenth of an inch. Um, from You want to leave some space from going around the corner. So you can kind of see like about that much space. That way you can go ahead and wrap the corners. But I have tools and gadgets, so I'll use them. So I'm going to cut all four of those off. I am going kind of quick because I have done this in multiple videos. So if you need a little longer walkthrough, you can look through some of my other Creelys mini album tutorials. But I don't want to waste a whole video just creating this part. So I'm going to fold, I put priest around all four sides. So now I'm just going to go ahead and attach because we are wrapping. and smooth, burnish it down. I go across to the opposite side. That way it's a nice clean wrap. And then over here now. So right here you just want to smush down the overlap. Because as you can see, right here, you want to smush that down. You can see I smushed it. And then we just want to wrap it over. And then I like to push down on the corners where the paper does overlap to kind of press that down a little bit so it's not so like it's not so layered up on each other. You, if you smush it down you can make it a little flatter. And almost done. So you want to do this to both of the cover pieces. This is what we have, and we have this one, and now we just need to go ahead and work on this piece. So let me cut a piece of cardstock. So I just cut a piece of cardstock that is 10 by 9. So my spine is 3 inches. I want 3 inches on each side, and then I need to be able to wrap, and actually that needs to be 11. Oops, hold on. All right, so I went ahead and I cut a piece of cardstock that is 9 by 11. So I want to put 3 inches on each side here, and then I need my 1 inch to wrap, which actually I said 10 by 10 on this. It's 11 by 11. So what I want to do now is, I need my scoreboard. So because I know I'm already going over 3 inches, I can make my first score line at 3 inches. Oops. I've already got tape on the back of this. I'm only going to use one of my spacers for my one inch at the top. And this basically is just going to set right in there like that. And I'm using my score line that I just created at the three inch mark as my guide. And I can set that down. Perfect. Okay. So now what I want to do is let's first, let's fold first because I need to find where we're going to fold. So, oops. Right, so let's give it a good nice 
this crease. And now I need to do the bottom one. There we go. And burnish that down. First thing we need to do is add some tape. So. And let's do this part first. And then we need to make some cuts. So actually, you know what, before we make the cuts, let's go this way. So you want to fold it like that. So now basically you folded it this way and you folded them this way because you need to be able to make some cut marks on the lines that you just folded over. So let me finish adding my tape. And I'm going a little past those fold lines that we have going side to side here. So now what we want to do is we want to cut, if you take your scissors and just put the tip towards where you want it straight. So you're basically cutting here, but you're only cutting up to the edge of the chipboard. So just be careful. Right there. And you're going to do that to all four sides. If you have gone over and messed up your cutting and maybe you're too short, it's you could always just take before you wrap and put a black marker around the edge because sometimes if you don't get it quite right, the corners of the chipboard will still show. So if you just go ahead and add some marker on those corners, it would be easier to do it before you stick it. But you can do that. So now what you want to do is stick this down. And if you have any of that overhang, like right there, don't worry about it. Because all you want to do is just burnish it in. And kind of wrap the chipboard there. And that's why you overhang on the tape, like so you go further, because if you do do that, you can, it's already got some sticky, so you can just stick it down. Right. And just like that. So there we go. So now we have, this is what we have. So the other thing now what we want to do is we basically want to kind of wrap this without wrapping it. So you want to burnish up against the edge. Like that. So you've kind of burnished it down. So then what you want to do now is you want to kind of press in because you want to create a little step here. And that's what, it, when you get ready to, that's what this is going to go on to. So you want to kind of make sure the paper is folded around this part here like that. And then it can step back up. So you just want to push in. So what we could do now is we can trim these down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut from an angle this way. On all of them. Just like that. 
that. So now I can keep working on this. So I'm going to keep working then on this a little bit and then once I've got it good we will put it together. So I went ahead and I'm well burnished down and I added score tape to my little flaps here as well as I added some score tape to the edge of my book because I don't know I don't want to come up too close to this with the tape and it's easier because this I know is going to get put on just like that. And I also know if you flip this over here, if you go all the way to the edge, you're going to have tape showing. So I just kind of like set it up against here to see like how far my tape needs to come so I don't have to cut it. If you go all the way, you can just cut it with a craft knife and peel it up. But I don't want to have to waste any extra tape. So I just went ahead and kind of eyeballed it that way. So now we're going to go ahead and attach these. So let me just make sure it's pressed down good. And I'm going to remove my tape. And get my cover. And I'm going to press it right up against the spine. And I'm making sure that I am even. I'm even here and I'm even down here. And once I know I'm good, I can stick it down and then give it a good press. And there we go. Now we're going to do the same thing to the other side. And lining it up. And stick it down. And look how great that is. Nice, clean edges. And your book lays completely flat. And then when you fold it this way, also too. So this makes it so much nicer. So now we just got to create the binding. To create the binding, this is what you're going to need, a piece of cardstock that is eight and a quarter by nine and a half. And these are the measurements that you need to go ahead and score on. So go ahead and either pause this video or take a screenshot if you have your phone or a photo. And these are what you're going to need to score. So you're going to go ahead and put the nine and a half inch across the top of the scoreboard. And then you're just going to score on those measurements all the way down. I've already done that. You can see it's already folded as well. And then what you want to do is go ahead and fold on each of the lines. And as I fold, I make sure I'm even across the bottom and the top, because if you go crooked on these, then your pages are going to attach crooked. So I fold it all the way down one way. I flip it over and I fold it back the other way. So now the only thing I need to do is go ahead and apply score tape. So I've gone ahead and added score tape. So in between you have a half inch gusset and then you have your three quarter inch spacing for your hinges. So it's just the three tapes there. And then what I'm going to do is fold it over on itself, making sure this is my half inch gusset. I'm not touching that. This one is just going on to here. And fold back. And then this one here goes over here. And that's just the way I applied the tape. So, and then the last one. Just like that. And then when you open it up, now you have your hinges. These are what our pages are going to get attached to. So, first, what you need to do before you go ahead and add tape to your hinges to the, the hinge parts and the back. You need to make some marks. Just grabbing a pencil. 
So because these are three quarter inch hinges, what I want to do, so before you add tape, it's easier to maneuver this around because you can fold it to what works best for you. Once you add tape, it becomes a little difficult. So my little boxes here on my mat are one inch squares with the little uh, quarter, half, and three quarter mark. So what I want to do is I'm taking, so if I fold it open, and I'm going from the part right here, I'm going from here up, and I want to go up this, or actually, no, I'm sorry, I'm going from here down a half an inch. So I'll leave a quarter inch space in here, and from here to here will be a half inch. And that's where my page is going to attach. So if I go ahead and mark it, and I'll show you. So right there, you can see my little pencil mark, and that is from here from here to here is one half inch spacing and then from the back up is a quarter so i'm going to do that to front and back on on top and bottom of all my hinges and that's just going to work as a good guide when i go ahead and stick my pages down it gives me an area to go ahead and make sure i'm even before i add tape i just wanted to show you that i went ahead and added all of my pencil marks you can kind of see them there, to all of my hinges on both sides, top and bottom. So now I'm going to add some tape. Now they all have the tape on them, front and back sides. What I want to do now is usually when sometimes when you add your pages, you make quite an angle to go ahead so you don't have overlap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a very slight angle because the way we attach my uh, way I attach my pages is different than some of the other people. So I'm actually going by the tape. So you can see right here, you can see where the tape is and then you can see my pencil mark. So I want to angle it from the edge of the tape, not the pencil mark. And I'm just doing, which I don't even know where that just flew to, but I did just a very slight one and you can still see, where's my pencil mark? Right there you can see my pencil mark there. Let me do it again and maybe it won't fly. I can show you how little. So you can see I am cutting a small sliver. So I'm going to do that to all of those there and then what I'm going to do is add tape to the back of this. And so for my tape I probably should have said I'm using 3 8 inch tape so that way I'm not coming all the way down to where my paper is going to go but I'm covering a good part of it. So just right there. You can see those two pencil marks now. So now I go in ahead and I have my score tape on. Let me just make sure I forgot to do this. I'm just making sure the score tape is pressed into those edges of the binding. This is what we have. And now let's get our book. Some space. So this binding is going to go right in there, just like that. And let's get my centering ruler. So I like to make sure everything is even. So seeing how my binding is three inches, I'm going to center it in. So I'm using a centering ruler, putting the zero in the middle, and I'm even on both sides. I'm just going to make a little mark. And I'm also going to do that at the top. And because this is three hinges, obviously the center of this would be the middle page. So I don't have to make a mark there. And I also have to measure up from the bottom. So nine, three quarters, three eighths inch up is how high I want to go. Whoops, there's my pencil. So I'm going to go three eighths inch up. I'm just making a little line there. So I know when I put my binding on, that that is the position I want to go ahead and put it in.
So let's go ahead and attach that. And that's the easiest way so far that I have found to go ahead and make that centered. Make sure um, that you make sure you have no tape overhang at the top. If you do, just go ahead and push it down. So let's go ahead and put it on. So I'm measuring to the center of that dot and that line. And I'm eyeballing the top. And we should be good. So now we just stick it down. Just press it down with my hands first. And what I want to do now is I can stick this down. And where's my so if you hear it now, I'm just going to lift up the book a little bit and just press into the edge of where my cover is. So I can kind of get the paper to go ahead and crease nice just like that sorry my camera is playing with the lighting right now and again on this side and then I'm just going to press up against this to make sure the tape is now good and stuck to my spine and all I'm going to do now because the lighting on my camera keeps messing up and you don't need to see me doing that. I'm just going to keep doing that and I'm just going to keep creasing it so I get a nice good um, crease lines in my paper. So it spread, it's, um, kind of spreads out the fibers a little bit so you won't tear. All right, the fun part. So I put my pages in the order that I want to do them. So this is these will get attached like this and then we'll have our pocket. So let's go ahead. I'm going to flip these over because I'm working from back to front. And then we do need to do one thing to this one. I have to add some pattern paper just to the edge here because that's where you're going to see the pocket. So um, let's get this one to suck down first and then go up this way. And then I will add that afterwards. So let's flatten this down. So what you want to do now, the reason why we made our pencil marks, so you see that one there, and I have the one on the bottom, is because what I'm going to do now is when I attach this page, I am attaching it up to those, I know it's going to be hard to see, but there's the pencil mark. So basically my page is going to go on like that. So, And the pencil marks are a guide, so you can kind of make sure you're straight. So that's how I'm going to do that. So the first one. And once you start going on them, it's a little easier. So I'm going to start with the bottom, line it up. Whoops. I'm going to make sure that I am going even with the binding part here. So when you see it, it'll all be flat. So I'm going to start at the bottom and put it to my pencil mark. Kind of press it there just a little bit to give it something to hold it and then that one looks good there and I'm going to look to see making sure my spacing is even top to bottom and to me I feel like that looks good so I'm going to go ahead and give it a good press down so I have that so now what's going to happen is this page will go on top here, but instead of using my pencil marks as my guide, I'm going to use this page as my guide because this is the one that it gets attached to and it will be better to get rid of the bulk. So, so basically then it's going to go in here, but I'm using this as my guide so my pages line up. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and cut a strip of paper and add it there. So when I do do that, I want to pay attention to how far down I have to come here to go ahead and cover that over. So I went ahead, this is the pattern paper I'm putting on. So let me just give you a little hint because we actually can kind of see the inside of our pocket right now. When you go ahead and put in photo mats or whatever you're going to choose to put in your pocket, 
sometimes because of all the layering, your paper might get stuck on like the pattern paper here. So let me just show you. So this is what we have here. So as you know, if you put things in the pocket, I don't know if you've ever run across where sometimes they get stuck kind of coming out because you have the two layers of the paper kind of fighting with each other. A hint is I like to take some tape and put it over here and it basically kind of creates a nice little smooth ramp so your paper doesn't get caught on any of that. And because we're basically seeing the inside guts, so to speak, of the pocket, you have that nice smooth part now. So when you do go ahead and put things in, you're less likely to have it getting stuck on there. So now what I need to do is before we attach this one now, I'm going to go ahead and add one eighth inch tape to the very edge. And I'm also going to add glue, but the tape is just going to go ahead and keep it attached while the glue dries because I'm creating a pocket. So I don't want to get anything on this area, but I do want to make sure it does hold. So and that, and it is hard to see because everything is so dark black on black. I'm going to get a piece of white paper. And because remember this is a flap now, this is the whole rest of the page and it's all thick. I just want to make sure that I'm going to get a good solid stick. So I'm just going to put this here and then this would go on top, but I can't see that way. So I'm going to have to use the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is get my glue, have it ready to go. And I'm going to remove my tape first because obviously the tape's not going to dry if you did the glue first and then took the tape off. Your um, glue might harden before. So I'm literally just going to take a little bead and I'm following up along my tape edge. just like that. Now I can go ahead and stick this one on. So again, I'm going to make sure I'm at the bottom. I think that looks good. Yep. And I can make sure I stick that down nice. And that's also why your tape doesn't go all the way down to the pencil mark. Because as you go, sometimes you're not going to go all the way down. So you just want to make sure that you cover my glue up. You just want to make sure that you're getting the tape where it needs to be and you don't want tape showing. So. It's also one reason why you don't go all the way down. So then now our pages flip like this. Whoops. All right, and then we just keep moving on. So we will do the next one, which will be this guy. So we're going to do it the same way, just like that. So again, making sure I'm lining, oops. Okay. Pressing it down. And the nice thing is now, because I'm only using score tape, I can go ahead if I'm not even just use undo and take it off and try it again before I add glue for the top page. So it's kind of nice just doing it this way. So I have my next page ready to go. Oops. 
I don't know if I can do it this way. Let's see if it is. Because now that we're getting thicker, I think I can. I'm going to try it. Now that we're getting thicker, it's hard to go ahead and, because of all the pockets and stuff, it is a little more difficult. So I'm going to try it the other way. So cheap first. Get my bead of glue down. Don't go too heavy with the glue only because um, once you press the glue down, obviously the glue is going to smush and you don't want it to smush into your pocket. So let's try this. Actually, I need to go from the outside. That looks, oops, nope, we're not good. <clears throat> oh, maybe I can do it like this. I am way crooked. All right, so that's where this comes in handy. So I'm glad you get to see. So let's get it unstuck. All right, let's try it again. And I've got, probably got to add some more glue because this glue dries so fast. Like beyond fast. Well, maybe I'll try it from this way instead. All right, am I even now? Actually, I wonder if it would have been easier to go from the other side. Why am I not even? Well, let's try it then doing it this way. So I'm gonna line it up to that part. Actually, that just worked much better. So maybe I'll show you what I just did on the next one. All right. Let me give that a second to dry, and then we'll do this one, and I'll show you how I did that. All right. So let's go ahead and do the last page in the book, or technically the first page. And I'll show you how I did the other one. Oops. All right. So to do that, the best way is seeing how you have to get them to line up. I am going to line it up from the top then. And I'm using my fingers to guide. And then that way now, press this down. And that was a thousand times easier than the way I was just doing it. So. All right. So we're just going to go ahead and let all that stuff dry up. And we'll keep going. So I'm going to go ahead and cover the inside front and back cover, but the first thing you want to do is once your pages are all in and you're all lined up, go ahead and erase any pencil marks that you might have made. That way you don't see them down the road when you realize you forgot. So I cut a piece of cardstock that is eight and three quarters by eight and three quarters and I added tape and 
I'm just going to go ahead and line it up. And I just want to cover over all of my extra overlapping and stuff so I have a nice clean back page. And I'm going to do the same thing for the front. And stick that down. And I think what we're going to do is seeing how we're doing pockets, I am probably going to go ahead and add some nice set of stacked pockets to this on the front and the, um, the front inside and back inside covers. So see that, so that just cleans it up all nice and everything. So I'm going to do the same thing to the front and then I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and create a set of stack pockets on the inside front cover, but I did the exact same thing that I'm going to do on the front on the back inside cover. So I created the two stacked pockets. If you wanted to add more, you could just make this one here a little shorter. However, I like the look of this and I wanted, um, I wanted the spacing so you can kind of see the stuff that's inside too. So. You can see it anyway, but I can just put bigger things in and you can see more of the pocket in the background. So I went ahead and added tape to this one and I'm going to go ahead and get this stuck down. Make sure you do add tape to the center because this is going to get some movement with those pockets on there. So you want to go ahead and make sure that you do have the center tape down. Like that. And this piece here is eight and a half by eight and a half is what I cut the pattern paper at. All right, so that's down. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm using the extra large pocket die to create my stacked pockets. So I went ahead and this is what I'm going to use. And then for the on the edge die, I'm using number 33 which is this pretty one right here and then my die and to go ahead and cut these out so I've already cut one out and I'll show you how I do it so I want to make sure um, I get the point in the center because this way you're going to line up even like right in there so the way I did that was I found my center on here and I made a little mark at the top of my ruler and at the bottom and then I just connected them so I have a little line and that's kind of my guide and I'm kind of letting the die do all the work for me so I have the point here and I'm going to put that right at my line so let me show you what I'm doing and I'm also using so right here will determine my center let me stick that down and then what I did was I'm using the points on my die. I'm putting them both at the same height on here. So I'm just basically lining them up with the paper. And then that way I know my space in there is good and I'm centered over here. And then I'll just cut it out. All right, so now I have that one cut out. And to go ahead and let me erase my line first. So to go ahead and do this one, what I wanted to do um, to go ahead and make it stacked, I need to make a score line. So I'm going to go ahead and score, putting in my scoreboard. I'm scoring at one and a quarter inches, just like that. So you can see my score line I created, and I can just fold in my sides right now. I still have to do pattern paper first, but just want to show you. So I fold them in, and then from the new score line that I just created, I want to go ahead and cut it. So I'm going to cut it at an angle. And then the other side. So when you go, let me fold this one. So 
So when you go ahead and stick them on, you're sticking this down inside like that, and then you're coming right to where your score line is, and your pattern paper will cover any of this over. So let me go ahead and get my pattern paper cut. So I have this piece cut out, and as you already know how we do it, I'm going to go ahead and line it into the area it needs to go. Trace it out. And then I'm just going to stick it on top. And that looks good. And cut that one out now. All right. And now let's see if we fit good. If you have to, you may have to trim off some off the bottom. And I think I look good right there. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead, ink the edges and stick that on. So I went ahead, added my paper and I also added tape to that one. And I went ahead and added tape to this one. So this one here, you just have to do a little different. So you want to cut your paper, the width for the pocket minus um, a quarter inch. So this happens to be seven inches. And what you're going to want to do is set it on here, just like you normally do because you need this to be able to go down inside the pockets. Oops, I moved it. So I'm gonna trace this out. Oops. And then take your die and you're gonna cut it out now. It's funny the pencil line looks darker on the camera than it does in real life. So I'm gonna place this right over it. And cut that one out now. Alright, so I just went ahead and cut that out. So let me make sure I'm lined up and we can start assembling. So that looks good to me. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and make some spice. So I'm going to go ahead and attach my bottom pocket. So I'm just going to turn it because it's easier for me. So I'm just eyeballing it to the center and I'm eyeballing the bottom here for my spacing. And that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to stick the first one down. Oops. I have that. And then my page here. So I can stick the rest of this down. And then I can take this one now. And I already have the tape. And this is the score line that I made. So this is going to go into the pocket right down to that score line. So the score line is lined up to this point and this point. And place it right in there. And now I have this one here. So the only thing I need to do is I do need to trim off the bottom because it actually it looks perfect, but I do need to trim off the bottom because I don't need that much. But I also want to make sure that I'm not trimming past here because you have, basically you have all this space here you're working with. So I'm only going to trim off probably 
an inch at the bottom there. All right, so I went ahead and inked my edges and cut off some of the bottom. Let's see, it looks like a good fit right there. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and add some glue on this one. Make sure when you are adding your glue, you're not going down too far because then you're gonna seal, um, you're gonna seal the inside because of the way this ends. So you just kind of need it by the edging. And looks good there. Clean up the glue. And there we go. So that is that set of stacked pockets right there. Really pretty. So the only thing left now to do is just go ahead and add my cover. So this is what I did with the cover. I just went ahead and put on my pattern paper. I love that image. And then this, and then I just wrapped the back side with a piece of this one here. The flowers kind of matched what was um, in her hair and stuff. So I have that. So we are almost done. So other than just going ahead and filling in with all the tags and everything, um, that's it. We are good. I'm going to probably add a strip. I might copy this one if I have some maybe and put it there just to finish it off. But other than that, it's just some finishing touches. I am going to go ahead and leave these pages here blank, leave them as photo mats, just because my book right now is so thick. I don't want to make it any more chunkier. So these pages here, I'll just leave them flat. There's already a lot going on with all the pockets and stuff. All right, so just going to go ahead and get some tags and stuff made. Oh, and then the pockets over here. So these are dry now. So what I like to do usually is I go ahead and put my ruler. So the Tim Holtz ruler that I'm using, it's kind of got a rounded edge right here. So you can see how pointy it is there, but it's rounded up here. So I just like to go ahead and put it in and take the rounded edge and kind of go up against where I glued and stuff, just to kind of give it a little bit of, um, to puff it up a little bit, just so my photo mats and stuff can go ahead and slide in nicely. So I just like to do that because we're gluing the sides down. We're not creating any kind of a binding pocket that would give it some more space. If you want to, you could always do something like that. I just prefer to glue it down but you just want to make sure that nothing is attached. Like when you have your glue and stuff and it smushes. So you just want to keep you have some space. And then what I'm going to do is just measure the distance. So seven inches looks pretty good. So I'm going to make a little holder about seven inches in height and see how that fits in there. So these went ahead and worked. So what I did was I took a piece of 12 by 12 paper and I cut it down seven inches in height and then just fold it in the middle to make a little booklet and I'm sticking those in my pockets like that and my last one and I can't really add too too much to them because there isn't a lot of because we didn't put a um, folded over piece we just sealed the edges there's not a whole lot of room so I can't go too crazy adding things but those are going to work just fine like that so now it's just filling in the pockets so I went ahead and added some strips to here on the front and the back just to kind of extend the pages a little bit visually so right now it it looks like it it's extended but it's just on the cover i mean on the spine and i added some of my pockets and um photo mats and stuff to my pockets and of course this one here so anyway if you enjoyed this tutorial as much as i enjoyed creating it this one is going to be one of my faves i really love how this came out and i created this all about the pockets because 
we all love to add pockets to our albums. And this one literally just features all nice, fun pocket ideas. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you are watching this on the Creolese YouTube channel or Patty's Crafty Spot, if you're not already subscribed, go ahead, hit the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. And until next time, guys, happy crafting. Bye. Thank you.